The problem with electrical is not so much that electrical is unreliable, is that an operator will forget. And leaving a battery switch on all defeats the purpose of a battery switch. Okay, if you have a battery switch and you put all your battery switches on all, you've defeated the whole purpose of having battery banks, having multiple batteries, multiple output chargers, all this thing you're saying, you know what, when I go to war, we put everyone on the line. No reserves, no nothing, no backup. I put everything on red 44, every time the whole house. And that might look like more is better, but I can tell you that once you drain all your batteries and your engine battery and your house battery are drained to nothing and you go start your engine, Whoever's on the boat with you will not share your enthusiasm for not being able to start the boat when you want to leave. <clears throat> and that will diminish your interest or other people's interest in a boating when the boat doesn't start and you're stuck. Because on the boat, you're not always having the luxury of leaving when you want. Sometimes you have to go now. You can't wait. And these devices make it easy for us as boaters to share power to other battery banks. All right, so we talked about charger, we talked about alternators, we talked about solar controllers, we talked about fuel cells, wanted to highlight DC generators, we talked about we could have a wind turbine there, we could also have a tow turbine. But now we're gonna be talking about combiners, and notice it's a bi-directional device, and we'll talk about a battery isolator. So, battery combiners, what are they? They're ACRs. Automatic combiner relay, that's what Blue Seas calls them. We have voltage sense relays, that's what BEP calls them. I mean, these are all just marketing names, right? Xantrax calls it echo charge, doesn't matter. It's all one word, multiple different words to say the same thing. It's a way of sharing voltage automatically between one battery bank to another. So here you see, and this is very interesting, you've got an unswitched distribution You'll notice that unswitched distribution, which could be the battery post if you only had one of them, but because we like modular and doing things right, we put an unswitched distribution right here. You've got a fuel cell going in there, maybe an inverter charger, a solar controller. It could be even a DC generator. And how are you gonna have those devices going to your house battery or an alternator going to your engine battery sharing the charge with either side, right? Because they're connected to only one device. Now, some battery chargers have multiple outputs, but an inverter charger, the new ones, don't have multiple outputs. They just have one output. That's it. It's whatever's connected to the battery is what it's going to get in a charge. So here we have, and it, all that could charge the house. This could connect the engine battery. How do you have, when you get a charge on your engine battery, send it to the house or vice versa? Well, a battery combiner does that for you. <clears throat> And what's nice about it is it's gonna combine your batteries at a certain voltage. You can buy them for different voltages, but let's assume 12 volts for most of us. 13.3 is times of plenty. I am always thinking about how very rich people can be generous. Bill Gates giving 40 some billion dollars to charity still has, what, 10? It's easy. It's easy to be generous when times are good. Battery combiners are the same way. They're saying, you know what? I will share my charge voltage with another battery, but only do so when I'm getting a charging voltage. Meaning, I got a lot of food on my table, sure you can have some food. But when times are hard, and there's not a lot of food on the table, there's no charge voltage, voltage is gonna say, you know what? I'm gonna di disconnect the two battery banks, and now the engine battery and the house battery are each on its own. So that if you disconnect your house battery, your engine battery still has a charging, good high charge voltage. And this effectively takes out the operator, the boater, yourself, from actually turning the battery switch from, you know, one, both, two. You don't have to touch that switch anymore. That switch is now the charging, the paralleling of your batteries is done in the background without your involvement. I have never, ever seen one of those devices failed. I have literally installed, our outfit has installed over thousands and I have never seen a failure of any kind on a battery combiner. So anybody that says, oh, well, they're gonna be unreliable, no. Black and white, I mean, no. They're awesome. And that device is about, I don't know, 120 bucks, depends. Canadian, right, maybe 100 US, something like that. It's awesome, awesome. And it's 
this big. It's tiny. You buy them uh, for the amperage that you're going to put out, right? You can buy them big amperage, small amperage, bigger the amperage, bigger the cost. Um, <clears throat> they also now have the ability, think about what's really common on some boats, a parallel switch, right? Like, or a remote solenoid on the dash. You know, even some sailboats, you know, for convenience, right at the starting, you're like, I, my batteries won't start. I'm going to hold a momentary button to put my two batteries in parallel. That, those devices, some of them will actually have the ability to put your batteries in parallel permanently, like if you want as well. Like, not only does it do it automatically, like I'm working on a big boat right now, like a 100 footer, and we're actually replacing the manual switch down in the engine room, which on a big boat sounds like easy, but you got to go down levels to get to it, and we're actually going to have it wired remotely. So they can actually put their battery banks in parallel from any bridge on the boat. Okay? Great device. Highly recommend it. Um, they all have different marketing names, but basically they're, they're combiners. They're solenoids. If you want to think about on all boats, you hear that clicking sound. You don't hear a clicking sound with these. But that kind of solenoid that actually, like a starter. Starter has a solenoid on it, right? How do you put two things in parallel for a period of time? This does it for a period of time as long as the charge voltage, charge voltage is there. You really want to see, that's the more expensive version right here. Um, you want to make sure, obviously, that you fuse a little bit like the charger. You're not going to have a 125 amp. You want to make sure that you fuse appropriately on both sides of the circuit so you don't have nuisance stripping. Very important, all charging voltages have to be unswitched. I'm not going to go into why, but I can promise you that if you want pain on your boat and you want magic, do it on the switch side, and then your boat is going to be mysterious and magical. If you don't want mystery and magic, do it on the unswitched side. It's up to you. Um, and the other implication about battery combiners and a limitation is that sometimes if the battery banks are too uneven and you've got a large battery bank and a small battery bank, you might have this thing coming on and off. As soon as they're in the parallel, the voltage just drops too much and then they disconnect, they come back up again, and you'll have the solenoid constantly clicking, not literally, but it could be, on and off. So it's important that you size that device for battery banks that are similar in size or where there's a large alternator. Rule number one, nothing is ever easy. So it looks magical in some ways, but there are certain implications of putting a device like that. Okay, I've seen problems in the real world where it's not for every application. So notice, unswitched distribution. All charging voltages have to go to an unswitched distribution. Black and white, no exception, period. Question. My problem is my house bank is down at 12.1, and my engine battery is probably around 12.8, 13, so it doesn't get used very much. It only gets used for 15 seconds. And so when that thing kicks in, all of a sudden, Trying to fill up the house bank and the engine battery doesn't much. Correct. Good question. We're talking about either battery banks that are at much uneven levels or where probably your house bank is much bigger, right? That's going to be a problem. The next slide is going to talk about a truly magnificent device. That was a planted question. I know. <laughs> there is. <laughs> <laughs> we know each other. So yeah, that's so, it looks bad, but it's not bad. No planted questions here today, okay? Um, it, it has its application. You know, you've got a, um, a Grady White, a Boston Whaler, a sailboat with two, like my boat originally, two 4Ds. Perfect. Similar size battery banks. You know, your alternator is really good size as a function of the battery bank size. Good application. But like I said, rule number one, nothing's easy. You've got to consider what are the implications of a battery combiner. Okay, it works, but notice it's also bi-directional, right? So it can go from here to there or there to there. And then sometimes there's situations where if the battery banks are too big or you're putting it on a thruster and then one battery is weak, the fuses blow and then you don't know. I, my life is full of horror stories. That's all I hear, right? That's, that's what people text me in the middle of the night on Saturday afternoon, Sunday morning. Like the problems never end. So I can, that's how I know this stuff. It's not because I'm insightful. It's because I get the text messages all the time 
about things not working. And they were like, well, how is that possible? And then you figure it out, you're like, oh, right. Yeah, we, you know, that makes sense. And then there's a solution. So there's a device for that, but it's not the perfect device. It has its place. Any other questions on battery combiners? No, you would never put your switch on both, ever. You'd leave it on one or on two. Never both. And I thought this was going to figure it out for you. That's right. But if you put it on both, you're forcing it on both all the time. So this device becomes redundant. And this is using it for a thruster, the third battery. Yeah. Yeah. But thrusters are complicated because thruster banks, thruster load could be four, five, six, hundred amps. You have that type of load. For example, we had a boater battery bank. The operator was using the thruster enthusiastically. <laughs> and I say, I'm not a sales guy, right? That is code for overuse of a thruster. Battery bank goes down like crazy. So now the pool is empty. There's nothing. Like some people are doing one battery bank, forward and aft thruster, same time for 30 seconds. Like, this is not a hybrid propulsion system, right? This is a thruster. It's supposed to touch and go, like touch, stop. OK, chaos, whatever. It happens. It's the end of the world. You're moving your boat with thrusters. You know what? I got it. Now the battery bank goes down completely. There's an ACR that's combined with that battery bank because the engine's on and the alternator's working. But if your battery bank is completely empty, have you ever thought about connecting, putting yourself in between a dam? a high point and a low point, what's happening in the flow, that's what's happening with hydroelectricity, right? I mean, that's what it is. If there's a turbine in the bottom, they're like, you got 200 feet on one side, you got zero on the other, that turbine is going to move. The bigger the difference between the two sides of water, the faster that turbine is going to go. Well, if you've got an empty battery bank and a full battery bank, the rate that's going to go through that pipe is going to be more than the alternator outputs, more than your inverter outputs, more than you could ever think is possible. And I've seen applications where that combiner is now pulling, not pulling, it's going through it 400, 500 amps. Well, it doesn't do that. Why? Because we put switch battery fuses. The fuses blow. Unrelated, my battery bank can get a charge. Well, it's because, you know, so it's a domino effect. Right. <clears throat> So that's why battery combiners are not the perfect solution for everything, but they're very useful. We put lots in boats, lots. 80% of the time, it's great.